Well, there it is. Hello, welcome to Warhammer 40k TD, a cooperative tower defense where you have to try to maze a little bit to slow down the computer from getting to your goal. Played on Goose of Difficulty, lots of different races to pick. I would suggest Space Marines for those less familiar with the map. Necron actually provides some useful buffs, but is a little bit more complicated to play. Flayed One is my boy. Let's see if we can get this right in its position. One, two, three, and up. Now, the other thing was the Skeleton Warrior. Left of the Mushrooms. Another one over here. And we can sort of build a spiral maze. But it's very hard to put that together right at the start. You need to practice or at least get it in your head as to roughly where you're building. Why does it feel like I've done it wrong? No, it was. It was one up. Okay. Aha! multi noob with the Orcs. They've also got short range characters. So the trouble here is sometimes players can sometimes steal a little bit of kills because some towers have much longer ranges than others. So this character, very short range, hence why he's in the middle. The bad guys will spawn at the top of your lane or the player's respective lane, work their way down and then they'll go through the middle clockwise for about 270 degrees until they get to the gate and come through. I need to micro a little bit here. So this guy is a right clicker if you want to min max. Make sure you hit each one of these once. They move quite sluggish though, the more players in the team. So that goes to your advantage. If you play this in solo, it's a bit tougher. But you can see I'm hitting at least each one once to try to proc off as much as possible. The poison effect, which is incredibly powerful. That's definitely troublesome. The biggest threat on this map is the air levels and then the boss levels and then the mech levels so if you wanted to find out about those you type in oh hang on a second type in da as well you deposit gold you get 10 percent of your uh gold that's deposited um back as interest so the more you can deposit the better so if you have da on copy and paste that's handy there is an auto deposit feature oops oh, that's okay but it does cost gold and i I think I prefer to just do it manually. My patience has ended. Now, let's come back to trying to work on the maze. So it was here with you. Oh. Yeah. Let's build around that point. So there's going to be a lot of skeletons sort of building a spiral, so to speak, whilst the flayed one is focusing on getting those hits. They slow down and come to this point, but once they move to about here, they start to move quite fast so that's why you need to put your flayed one here if you put your flayed one over here he's not going to be anywhere near as effective this is the way to go so right click like a nutter this is a tough level because it has medium armor and at the moment all my stuff does medium uh, does pierce and damage which does less to said armor less damage but as you can see I'm trying to reduce as much as possible and then these skeletons can sort of finish off the ones that got tapped a little bit but medium armor takes less damage from pierce, but the effect of the slow poison is quite impressive. I have no idea why towers have a chance to miss, though. That seems like a very strange mechanic to put into the game, as you can see. So, effectively, he's given the creatures an evasion, which I think is probably down to the difficulty, actually. So his way of making the game more, difficulty, more difficult was to increase the RNG. You could have increased the flat health, but there you go. So, if I type dash S, you, that's how much gold I got banked. That's how much gold everyone's got banked. Maybe I want to withdraw a little bit of cash and then build another flay one. Ideally, I want another flay one because they're way better than these skeletal warriors. But I need to get this maze sorted. So I'm going to work on the maze in the meantime. And hope that my skeletal warriors have what it takes. And I hope that I'm doing this maze correctly. Because right now I feel like I'm not doing it correctly. <laughs> so I need the creatures to come in through here. I feel like this has gone wrong. Ah, no. They went. I just did this though. So how has this gone wrong? Anyway, let's come back to right-clicking like a nutter, making the most of the uh, time that they spend standing still. There we 
go. That was nice. Is it me or is this maze looking wrong? They'll have to come through here, come here, and then come out. So I need to block this. But if I block that, then they can't come in that way. <laughs> How has this gone wrong? Because I literally just did this. They enter through the top. Enter through the top. Yeah. And then come out that way. Right, I think I've I've worked it out, so I would need to block there. Okay, I think panic over. <laughs> I was a little bit like, I've just done this exact build of this maze a moment ago. And now it's somehow changed. It's quite stressful trying to maze. So theoretically, if I go like this, and then I go like this... This isn't how I remember it being. But if you build like there and then block up here, they'll come f they'll come through there, through here and back out this way. It is right. It just doesn't feel right. What's this overclocked up to? Is he trying to swing his kills on this side? I feel like everyone interferes with one another. Even though it's technically a co-op, you can get a bit dirty and steal kills and whatnot. Back to right clicking, min max. I highly suggest it if you're playing the Necrons, get a flayed one and right click as you can see. This applies to quite a lot of different tower defenses and I quite appreciate those tower defenses. Obviously my maze isn't complete yet so some of those can come through. Now let's consider finishing this off. Fulfill the prophecy. And then I can breathe. See you later, zombies. It's nice knowing you. Feels good, though, that I've got this maze finally... Almost finally complete. Deposit gold. Withdraw gold. Finish maze. And then... Quit. We've yet to defeat this. I currently actually have a version of this... A YouTube video of this maze being played by us on YouTube. It's un we haven't beaten this, but we did get quite far before it crashed on us. We've had multiple attempts, some less successful than others. I can still maze around if I wanted to. <gasps> Level 5 is the really hard one, boys. So I'm not going to get like many kills here. Hopefully... Some people have put down the uh, their anti-air towers. The Necron's anti-air tower is expensive and absolutely useless. I would not suggest it. So the slugger boys turn into shooter boys. And that's what you really want. Shooter boys. You need like five or six of them to clear your own wave. So as you can see, it's a little tricky. I managed to slow a few of them down. But yeah, they'll pretty much just fly on by. So good luck with that one. And try and pick off what you can. Luckily they go round multiple times. But remember, they basically go 270 degrees from your lane. Round the maze, clockwise. And then they'll head straight for the middle. Tyranid is actually a good choice for the last player. Because all of these have a, like a slow poison a bit. That two lice isn't too bad, actually. Pretty good. Well done, guys. That's not too bad, actually. I was getting ready to brace for that because there's so many units clumped up together. If you go... If you have a bad time on the air levels, they'll just take huge chunks of life off of you. Anyway, I'm going to go... Maybe a... No, we can get a flayed one in the middle. Oh, no, no, no. Even better. Let's see how I get on with just the one flayed. Because the quicker I can get to a wraith, the better. Because it basically has like a starfall type ability. But as I was... I'll come back to explaining middle. You've got to micro a bit. If you want like more autoplay, then just play Space Marines or something. But this one, you've got to try if you want to get the most out of it. Make the most of them slugging it up. The warrior towers, of which I've massed in a spiral, are pretty garbage. Like, really bad. I've played with the other races, and they come across as one of the most least effective towers I've ever seen. The warrior towers. 
but at 10 gold they're not too expensive and they get the job done very badly though so deposit him coming back to the uh, Tamagons the Norn Queen you know the Tyranids each one of these has effectively what this guy has, slow poison, which is really important versus the boss waves because you have two really strong high health pool guys and they will breeze past your maze and through many other people's mazes and they will go to the middle. Then you need them to really be slowed down as much as possible as they're going through this final maze. And if you've got all of these, it really helps because then you can have a few powerful towers as the game goes on, I will start to build towers more focused towards Diaster and give him the towers. Like, I am quite co-op. I just don't like the team, uh, the the kill stealing that goes on sometimes in this game particularly. It's better this time, but sometimes you have players that build right over here. They might kill a bunch of your, your kills, so to speak, before you can actually do the damage. Now, whilst it's a co-op, it is kind of horrible to play when it's like that. Now, there are mech levels. Those are going to come up next. I think that's level 8, which is the next level. So hopefully, I will have enough gold, providing that I get to kill these. This is a lovely choke point, though. It seems to be working in my favor massively. Please don't kill my towers. They can kill your towers, and they can one-shot them. Now, if I check my bank, 327 gold is more than enough for the Wraith Tower. So next turn, we build that. Pretty much smack in the middle, or close enough to the middle, more like here. And um, that will just do astronomical amounts of damage. You could go for a destroyer, does bonus damage to mechanical. It's what you would normally do if you're playing some of the other races. But the Wraith is actually more effective than that. And it works versus every single type of level, not just bonus to mech. Ah, Elder Builders. You can upgrade these. Those are the jet bikes. They cost 60 gold. These are like 10 gold. But these upgrade into three different tower types. Like, I think one's more about poisoning. Another one's more about flat out siege damage and such. You can aggravate these. Yeah. Move! And off they go. Oh my goodness. Fire warriors apparently have a chance to stun. Wow. That seems strong. <laughs> I'm going to withdraw my money now and go get myself a Wraith Tower right here. So one of the other reasons why I played the Necron here is because no one else actually plays it. But it actually has a tower that provides slow poison, so it has like an 80% chance to poison... Uh, no, 80% chance to paralyze, which basically stuns. Very good versus the boss. Brilliance or a command or endurance or a permanent immolation. So you imagine if you get like one of those. Oh, hang on a second. Let's activate his ability. And you'll see what I mean. This is basically my kind of starfall type deal. It's pretty strong. It gets weaker as the game goes on. Because the 200 damage that it does doesn't have much of an impact when the units have like 5,000 health. But... It's incredibly cost-effective, I think, personally. And the good news is, is these do such little damage, they shouldn't really be taking too much from Overclocked, if anything at all, really, hopefully. Um, Taint has got a nice spiral maze going on here, so it's a similar principle. Quite elongated as well. So the Orc have Grots, they only cost 3 gold, very good for mazing, and then you get the more powerful towers in the middle. Da. The cooldown on this isn't too bad, but it's also long enough that you can't really use it again for this leak. It would have to be like someone else's leak after that. Or if your maze was long enough, which gives you another reason to elongate your maze, is to get more chance out of this. Because as you can see, I'm right about to click it again. Make sure you don't right click on one of them though, because it will interrupt the spell casting. Okay. That's good. 278 gold banked. You want to be as greedy as possible, really. So knowing the levels really pays off. In my experience, this is enough for the Necrons until level 13, which isn't too bad. But level 14 is a problem. So you might want to consider getting a second Wraith by that level. Just to 
double up on the infernos. So that's probably one of the things I would do, is just bank gold like a nutter and watch the show. Because you'll see, this guy is pretty much good enough no matter what. Fortunately, they slug around here, so it'll give them a bit of time to replenish. But I might consider spending a bit of gold to elongate. Here we go again. So if you look at their health pools, dropping 200 a tick with 640 health, four ticks will do it. Right, so one of the other things you can do on this map is give the tower to a player. So that's what some players might end up doing, is they'll say, Witty, can you build me a Deceiver Tower? And they'll give me 400 gold. Unfortunately, the giving gold and wood is convoluted in this, in that you have to type G and then the number that you want to give in gold, and then select the player. You've got to be very careful with that, though, because there is a chance it can bug, and it's happened a couple of times to us, where the pop-up is actually stuck and you cannot get rid of it unless you basically exit the game so the player can't talk the player can't build the player can't do anything so it effectively kills them if they do it and something else happens in the game that causes it to interfere so hopefully that doesn't happen if people do give gold if it does that player is basically out of the game Tainted says, Witty, can you build me a Deceiver Tower? I say, yes, I can. Just got to remember to activate my thing. What's coming over? He will, he'll want it over here. Right in the middle of his maze. Oh, that looks weird, though. Remind me. S stand on spot. So here. That looks weird, though. How's this going? Comes around like this. Goes there. Am I the only one that feels like... I'm going to put this in the wrong place. Do you see what I mean? I think there. Yeah? And they should still go around. You just... Okay, fair enough. That helps. That is the plot. It's a 400 gold tower, so I don't want to mess it up. Also, I forgot to activate this. Come back, do that. That's the only danger when you're building these towers for other players. And then, as soon as it's finished building... Let me just show you. It's got Brilliant Aura, Command Aura. I'll show you a couple of its bits, and then I'll give it over to Tainted about what it can do. It's actually providing the aura at the moment. So 80% chance that an attack will stun. Brilliant. Command. Endurance. Slow poison. Permanent immolation. So you click on give. You select tainted, which is the player you build it for. So anyone with a blue aura underneath their tower is benefiting from the aura that's provided. Coming up to level 11. If you're not sure what type of creature is coming out next, the free to concern yourself with are air, mech, and boss. So air, 5, 15, 25, 29. Those are the levels that are going to probably kill you. So that's what we really need to worry about. Boss, 16, 24, 30, 32. They're tough. They do take more lives, I think, every time they get to the portal. So instead of taking one, I think they take like five. And mech, which is like fortified armor. is act Mech actually gets harder the, the longer the game goes on. At the start, it's a bit of a joke, as you saw. Not really that much of a threat. But it actually does become a bit more threatening because it doesn't get affected by spells. Uh, apart from this one. like um, It doesn't get affected by the slow poison, I think, is the best way to put it. I can still elongate my maze even more if I want it here. So this has worked out quite nicely. 15 is the scariest level, so we want to kind of consider something... Well, this is where the Wraith comes in useful as well, because I'm going to build it for level 14, but it'll also be useful for level 15. But what I probably might do is give my gold to Diasta. If I don't know if the Tyranids have any good solid anti-air or not. Just to encourage, just so he can build a few more towers. I can always build a wraith in the middle, but it's not that good. I can give him the deceiver. I think that would be better. I'll see how much gold I've got um, by the time level 14 and that comes around. So I'll keep banking for now. Level 14... 
build a wraith, bank, and then whatever I've got, I'll build a deceiver. If I've got 400 gold, I'll just build a deceiver down here for Tainted. And hopefully it will, it will help. I don't think it's necessarily the best anti-air tower, but I don't think I provide much in terms of anti-air. You've got to remember that the leaks will come from here, they will come from here, they will come from here. So it's kind of hard to cover all the angles. And they'll come there very quickly. So you really want the players on the outside to do the majority of the damage and soften them up as much as possible. Let's have a look and see how some of the other mazes are going. Although I'll come back to this in a second. When that's on cooldown. So this is the funny stun one. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Let's activate our Infernal. So they have 1200 health. So it needs 6 techs. Which isn't too unrealistic. It just gets a bit harder after that. This is a stellar spiral maze as well from Nervous Guy. We've got Silver Hide with more of a kind of like straight line maze. There's those damn hammers that I was getting salty about earlier. They were stealing a whole bunch of my kills in a previous attempt. Which made it very hard for me to be in a position where I could actually then start to sort of like give other towers to other players. You're welcome to pay for them, but I'm also okay sort of buying them. Ooh, so they've got through this maze. Fred's got a really long maze, but he's... I see a lot of crits coming up, but it's obviously not having enough of an impact. I don't think I'm going to be able to get another one of these, and I might not want to, because it means I won't have a cooldown for it on the next turn. So I'll probably just leave it, to be honest. It's not worth it using it just for a few units. Okay. Right, that is a lot of gold. So what I'm going to do is build another one of these when I withdraw the money. No, not that one. That one. Then I'm going to come down here and sell mid sag top next to ghoul. I will build that. And then I'll just give that to you. You don't have to pay me for it. And I'll actually just give you... Mm, I'm scared to type it. Hang on a second. Let me just activate this. And then this. I'm pretty sure it's okay. Because it stacks. G491. To Diesta. There you go. And then just bank on that. Because you'll get 15% income. My biggest fear, really, is just these guys rebelling and suddenly destroying, destroying my towers. Because they've done it before in this position. If you build closer to this place, they, for some reason, flip out and destroy your stuff. So this is really close. I'm, I could elongate my maze a bit longer, but I'm scared to do so. Just in case they do that. Now, maybe if I get enough gold... Even level 13 was scary, actually. I ended up building the second wraith for this level. Might have not been super necessary. But it's done now. I should have enough gold for maybe a third wraith, which I can then use as a form of anti-air. But otherwise, I don't tend to go for the Deceiver for my own, because these guys are casting, so they're not actually doing that much damage. Uh, so this is basically my only other tower that would benefit that much from the Deceiver. So I don't actually have like that many strong towers yet. The Monolith's got some pr impressive um, splash, but I have built them before in the past. And whilst they're good, they're not like OP OP. If I get to 500... Well, this is one thing that you can work out, okay. In your tower, you can auto-deposit. It costs you gold to do so, so a manual... Deposit withdrawal is preferred. But you can get one piece of lumber which costs 1,500 gold at 500 kills. You can sell it for 1,200 gold. But it's needed for the ultimate tower. So, after activating these, there we go, 2k health. So, the time it takes you to be able to afford the final tower, which is like 2,500 gold, you can't really build anyway. If you bank that 1,200 gold, you get 120 gold. So after three turns of banking, 
So basically what I'm saying is if you sold that piece of wood rather than hold on to it, you'd get your money back, kind of, if you banked after three days, I'm pretty sure. And then you'd just buy another piece of lumber. So I think the plan really would be to just sell the lumber straight away and then bank on it. Because you can also buy a race, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest doing that because it's quite expensive building your own towers at the moment, let alone going into another. Oh, shite. Did I not transfer it? Sorry, Diasta. <laughs> you get distracted because you've got all these buttons that you have to click as well at the same time. I'm trying to explain. Apologies, Diasta. Now... It's definitely yours. Right. Deposit. There's that lumber. So if I quickly bought... No, sold the lumber and then deposited. You get the idea. So, dash S. 1721. My bank account raised 147 gold. So I've got a hell of a lot of gold. Oh, there comes the air. Scary, scary, scary. This is my fault if we die. Damn. I don't know what else to do. I'll just give some more gold to Diasta. And then I'll deposit the rest of my ones. Here it comes. It's an elven eagle. Lord of the Rings style. They are getting whittled down though. Wow. Really good job. Ah, oh, no! Damn! So... How do you know who to blame when that one comes? I think it's Tainted's fault. Because it's 270 degrees. So, my mobs go down here, 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 and here, and through here. Those creatures came at the top, didn't they? So, Tainted's ones go here, 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 here. And then down. So it's overclocked and tainted. Got to, bl to blame for that. Anyway, we've got boss. <laughs> it doesn't really matter too much anyway. 20 lives is pretty harsh. We lost like 17 lives, I think, there. You really want like this slow poison tower. Multiples of those, ideally. So I should have built another one of those versus the boss. Anything to slow these bad boys down is ideal. Don't know how much gold they give because I've never killed one. So it's pretty harsh. You got a boss level right after the air level. I'm focusing on giving me gold to Diasta though, really, at this point, because I don't. I think I've got enough to kill majority of the levels, so that's good enough. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not worried about boosting up my territory that much more, as long as it's enough to sort of clear and do its job. I'll just keep banking. I might just keep banking. Nervous guy wants. Where do you want it? Yeah, you're pinging it. I would assume it's here, but again, I'm scared to build. There? Ye. He says ye, so if that goes wrong, it's not my fault. So these guys have got 24,000 health. We haven't seen any of them get to the middle just yet, which is a really good sign. But they surely must be on their way. Here we go. So it's the top. So hopefully... They've got the slow poison. But they're not necessarily being slowed that much. So I might actually build a few flayed ghouls for Diasta in that territory. They're being slowed, but I think my... Flayed ghouls slow and more. Like this one particularly has been really slowed. So 
sweet. Uh... Did I give that for you? No, I didn't. See, it keeps you distracted. Nervous guy. Activate these in a moment, and then I'll build for Diesta. Activated. So this is a mech level now. So you get air, then boss, then mech. The 4k health. Three of these should be doing the job, though. I don't know if it stacks, though, to be honest. I've never really worked out for sure whether it stacks. It feels like it doesn't, but... It says it does 200 damage in 10 seconds, and they only took 1k damage. So I don't know. Right, let me try to work this out. Flayed one there. Flayed one. Yeah, something like that. So every now and then they're within range to hit a boss or something. When I get the gold, let's see if I get the gold, because I don't think I'm going to do too, fe too well first. But I'm starting to not kill so much now, because I'm spending so much in the other places. But as long as I get a few more flayed ones, then I'll just continue banking. And we'll go from there. It doesn't stack, says Darfad. Yeah, it doesn't bloody feel like it stacks. You can stagger them then, at least. So you do that, and then the next one you sort of do like 10 seconds afterwards. Uh, flayed one. Think... Is that the opening? That's the opening. And then that's the next flayed ghoul. Yeah. So it's kind of like a flayed ghoul every now and then, just attacking incredibly quickly and slowing them down. You might actually want to see... Didn't mean to activate them all at the same time. This looks like a really tough level. This is what I meant about the mech suddenly becoming not a joke. It's a joke at the start, and then it suddenly becomes not a joke. I mean, whatever Clocky has, like, maybe he has more towers that are based around stunning. Maybe get a few of those around the middle as well. Unfortunately, the slow poison doesn't work on the mech. So we need damage for that one. Oh, have I... Yeah, I haven't given the ghouls yet. Not that it really matters, but... They're not exactly that much damage. It's just whatever they provide. Still good damage in this middle, though. Brood Lord kicking in there. Khan effects. There's, of course, the Deceiver providing the aura. I might elongate my map and my maze since my majority of my DPS, pretty much all my DPS, comes out from these guys. I'm kind of sacrificing myself a little bit at this point, though. I don't think it really matters making myself that much stronger. A few cheap towers. Just elo elongate. Maybe one or two more flayed ghouls. That kind of stuff. I need more damage, not towers. Yeah. A monolith would be handy. I actually, funny thing is, is I have to build another deceiver to get it. Because it requires a deceiver. Even though, obviously, I've built them, but I've given them to other players. <laughs> So this is staggering the effect. Ah! I've elongated my maze to the point where they actually think it's quicker to go a different way around. That's a pickle. So I better not elongate my maze. <laughs> did they destroy a couple of my towers? Because it looked like they did. And then they moved on. Like, did I have towers here? That's what I meant earlier as well. If you make your maze too long, they start going ape shite and attacking. I haven't killed us. But they took a shortcut. The AI in this isn't the smartest. And it might misbehave. It looks like he's misbehaved in other areas, because those aren't my ones. It felt like sometimes they go, don't go to the right point. Yeah, try not... If your maze is starting to do that, you might need to cut it down a little bit. 
It looks like a right mess, doesn't it? But the men the middle, which is the most important, is still looking solid. Let's see how people are doing with their banked gold. Apparently I've got 1800 still banked. Nervous guy with 3k and Diesta with 3k, very good. How much gold does Diesta... Well, there you go, I just answered your question. I outright blocked the path in trigger region. Maybe, yeah, just that one extra step. We'll see what they do with the next build. I think I've got like one extra skeleton, otherwise I sold the ones around here. Wait, yeah, it looks weird, but it does work. Right, now, let's increase my damage a little bit more and get a monolith tower in the middle. Oh, bugger, I need the deceiver. Oh, it's not like the deceiver's a bad tower. Just do it. And I can't give this one away. He takes too long to build, though, so I don't think he's going to be... The monolith tower's going to be ready for this level. So, whatever leaks, leaks. But it should go to other players, and I don't think it will go to the last boss. And in that way, other players can get kills as well. It's actually kind of ideal that I don't get too many more kills. So what I'm going to do is actually not um, try to get kills right now. Because the more players that hit 500 kills, they're all going to get one piece of wood. Which could be used for their ultimate tower. Oh god, these are still misbehaving. Why are they misbehaving? Well. <laughs> Why are you misbehaving? My maze really isn't actually that different. I'm pretty sure I've actually made it shorter than what it was when you were behaving. Maybe it's just shorter in other places. We'll see what the next level does. <laughs> but yeah, as I was saying, if the other players can reach 500, they're all going to get basically 1,200 gold with that one piece of wood. So that's a lot of extra money. So you really want everyone to try to hit 500. Like, if you hit 500, I suggest you just bank from there on and stop building so that people can get your leaks and then build up their own kills. Their own kill count. So, actually, what would be an even better idea is to withdraw everything I've got. 17.30. And give it all to Diesta, who can then bank that bad boy. probably got too much on his screen to even see that you got it. There we go. Unless he spent it. But if we do dash SA, he's now got 4,800. Yeah, I think that's probably the best tactical play right now for the team. You can earn 10% interest. Oh, can you now? That's handy. So, everyone's still in the game. If a player was out of the game, you have an admin tower here that can turn on and off the spawns. What that means is, say for example, Multi Noob quits the game. He'll no longer spawn units unless you say that he can. You can manipulate that a little bit by turning it off for air, mech, boss, but turning it on for the normal levels. So you get, like, the gold come through still. Right, let's see what these creatures do. Oh! It looks like they might do it properly this time. Here we go. I get to enjoy my maze again. Yay. Next one. Almost could just build a whole maze for, full of wraith towers. And stack them slowly over time. Each one taking it in turns. They are having a very hard time going through this maze though. The AI is just... I better not slag it off too much, just in case it hears me and then starts attacking my towers, but that's really what I'm most scared about, is how it's not moving fluidly, and it looks like it could just rebel at any second. There we go, one's managed to make it out. So I'm not quite strong enough, really, at the moment. But I'm not supposed to be, because, like I say, my leaks will go to other players, they'll get their wood, and then I suggest they start banking that gold. Can the admin tower kill creeps? It can kick a player. I don't know. If I right click. No, I don't think so. Although it seems strange, doesn't it? Because it's basically got an attack. 
And it says it's very fast. But it can't be working. So it must be disabled somehow. Even though it's theoretically there. Like if I click on that. Must target a building or tree. Ah, okay. Now what? I think I was going to get that monolith tower at some point, but I think I decided against it because I still want other players to sort of overtake and get their gold. I'm not going to deposit every turn to Diesta because, like I said, that bug can happen. And if that bug happens, I'm yeah, I think I've given enough to Diesta for now. If the bug never happens, where it just freezes your game, basically. I'd happily do it at every moment that I have spare gold to give. Did something go wrong up here? It looks like something might have gone wrong. <laughs> to be fair, we've done quite well to not have the creatures destroy us completely yet. But yeah, some tower defenses, the creature AI is not the best. So you're actually better off leaving two gaps instead of one gap. What do I mean by that? Well, if I had enough gold, I could show you. But I've been depositing too much of it. Let's withdraw it and explain. So, that's one gap. That's two gap. So the creatures have either that much space with the two gap, or that much space with the one gap. So the tighter you make it, the more chance that the creatures are just going to be like, I don't like this maze. I'm going to attack it. So that's what you don't want. Right. Air is level 25. It's also level 29. How much health have they got now? 16,000. This does 200 damage for 10 seconds, so theoretically that's 2k damage, 4k damage, and then 6k damage. So I'd need quite a few more. At least um, 5 more of them, maybe 6, to actually completely clear this. Boss is level 24. Yeah, I'm not actually as scared of the boss as I am the air. Like I say, the air is that kind of, that variable, where you either clear it and not lose a single life, or a pack of it gets through and you lose like 17 lives, like that. That's what I'm worried about. I'm loving the stun. Ah, you've been playing this, have you, on your own time? See, they're, they're, fan, they're quite a fan of this map. Although I've, we've played this quite a number of times. Sometimes it crashed. Other times we just sucked and uh, lost. So this is a good run so far with us. Oh, I don't think we got this far on the previous attempt. I feel like this is the furthest we've gotten, to be honest. Also, I may as well start ticking these along again. Seems like the show is uh, rolling on for quite some time here. The ogres aren't going away. Anytime soon. I have played the Minerals map. Yes, sweaty uh, girls. Quite some time ago now. It is on the channel. If you look up Witty Warcraft Minerals. Uh, Speedo did the heavy majority of carrying in that map. I don't say that I did a very good job playing it. But there is footage of it. <laughs> it's hammer time. Wow, he's got even bigger. Old one eye. That's a euphemism. Especially with what I just said before it. Before reading the name.
Let's check the bank interest then. Also, this is funny. What is going on over here? Overclock trying to repair what mess has been created. Yeah, Diaz actually doesn't have that much gold bank now. So he's obviously spent quite a bit in protection. But I don't know how many levels there are. If you check the boss, it goes up to level 32, which would suggest that there's 32 levels. Because you would think the boss would be the last level. So we're quite close. If only there was some sort of way to make income every 60 seconds. And then you could just have them running around for like five minutes. Like they're doing now. <laughs> I know ogres aren't that bright. But this is ridiculous. Maybe Overclocked is a genius. And he's actually worked out the most efficient maze of them all. Is that a possibility? Are we willing to accept that Overclock might actually be 200 IQ plus? For shame. Diesta trying to steal Overclock's thunder. It's like Overclock's getting attention and Diesta's like, look at me. I might give my goal to Diesta again. That might shut him up. Or should I build something? It shouldn't like it shouldn't be that I'm completely weak though, at the same time. It is important to be kind of strong on the outside, probably more than the inside. I mean this is very important because it is the last lane technically. But, theoretically, the mobs will go round multiple times. So, a spot here is actually hitting them multiple times, whereas a spot here is only hitting them once, if that makes sense. But with enough players, you don't really need everyone to be super strong on the outside. What is going on? What have you done? Have you blocked them? They'd start attacking your towers if you did. I did get salty because Silverhide was stealing my kills in a previous turn. I don't like getting off to a bad start because then it makes it not fun to show off the map because I can't build anything and I can't do anything. I can't explain what I'm doing. So at this point, I don't care. You guys can have all the gold you want. I stopped building and... You know, I gave gold ages ago because it's irrelevant. I hit 500 gold. I got the point. It's actually more important that other people reach that point. And there's at least one other person that's close to it at this point. Overclock might be able to reach it by the time the level ends. I don't know about those four, though. I should at least get some anti-air. That's the downside of the Necrons. Is that they suck for anti-air. There is actually, um, I think it's the Orcs, or there's a different race where they can actually upgrade the ability to web air. But I don't know how that works because I've not done it. This is basically Locust Swarm, which is fine. That's the Inferno ability, which is, as you saw. Deceiver is like the Aura. That's technically anti-air, but it sucks. I've tried it. It, it. I didn't even really notice it doing anything versus air. Monolith is a good tower. Nothing to argue with there. So then the only tower that's really left, after this one that's like doing bonus damage to mech, and you know the player and the warrior, is the ultimate tower. And if I was going to build that, I may as well just build that in the middle. 
but I can't afford that because I would need lumber and it's not cost efficient for me to go get that it costs 2,500 gold and then you would need the 1,500 gold that you spend on the lumber so it would be 4,000 gold which as you can see I'm not exactly that close to right now but it is interesting to think that Diasta could actually pay for that theoretically I haven't got my ultimate tower he could actually allow me to buy that for him and then give it to him so it might still provide a very good use if we all had the ultimate towers around the middle that would be the best way to go if we're in that position let's see how much gold Cheeky Diasta has see, he's only got 2k so keep banking or something I'm worried about air. You know you can ask someone to build anti-air for you into your base and give it to you? That's true. They could do. The only one race that I know that has really good anti-air is actually the Orcs, but it's their cheap one. So I don't know how effective it is at this point. I don't know the other races well enough to say, oh, okay, this race is a very good, like, tier 7 building versus air, you know? Silver hides broken the game as well. <laughs> it's so dumb. At least my maze seems to work. But it works against me because they're actually going through it, unlike these other players where they're not really going through it properly. Silver has the web. Yeah. What if the creature got webbed and then it decided to auto-attack after being webbed? <laughs> it started destroying your towers. Fred's also got webbed. So it was orcs that can do that. There's the war boss. And that's um, Squigger. I think he's their ultimate tower, actually. He's got active abilities. Uh, don't know. There you go. There's a stomp. I think it's like a five second stun. Theoretically very powerful, but when the mobs are so spread out like this, it doesn't always work. Look at the Norm Queen just parking her butt over the portal to the future. Keeping it warm. I think we're doing okay. First is the normal levels. I think we've got this unlock. It is just anti-air. It's taken a really long time to actually clear these levels now. So this, we could be here some time. It could just be like 50 minutes just to do like the next six levels. Well, some of them managed to get through. Oh, here we go. The Aster's getting some action. Well, we need stun versus bosses, don't we, sir? The character like Deceiver, there might be cheaper towers than the Deceiver, but he has that 80% chance to stun on here. So that versus a boss is pretty bonkers. Oh, you can't stun bosses? Are you sure? Does it say it doesn't work versus bosses? Right, nervous guy got his uh, 500 gold, so that's one extra piece of wood. 666 six, six gold banked. Does that mean anything? We'll never know. Perhaps his face will tell us. See, Diesta could actually just give me the piece of lumber as well, if he had a spare one. Or nervous guy if he's feeling comfortable enough to do so. And then maybe if I got the gold from Diasta. Nice. Anyway, boss level. I would be really interested in putting down my ultimate tower though. Somewhere in the middle here. Like that would do. Played one or enhanced reaver. I can't even see the hell from these. The 
Did your stomp. Stomp work. Stomp. <laughs> I hope their health regeneration isn't actually higher than the damage we're doing. Well, at least this guy looks like he's being beaten. And he's slowed. So that slow poison's working. So maybe get some of those slow poison. Maybe these ones are affected by slow poison. Hopefully all slow poisons work. You feel like I don't do damage at all? That's right, get wrecked. I don't intend to do much damage. My gold is all going to Diesta pretty much. It has done for like the last 12 levels. Because I reached 500 kills. I got my bonus lumber. There's not much need. The only thing I would want to build, like I said now, is the ultimate tower. And then even that would just go into the middle. So I'm not really worried about this spot anymore. It's long since been abandoned. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if we could have done any better. There's not enough gold to get my ultimate tower anyway. I'm pretty sure just a few of these would be a problem. But when there's like 12 of them... That one's the closest, isn't it? You might have to start focusing. Try to pick off the weakest ones if you can. This is going to hurt. So close. Hold the door! <laughs> this is so silly. We got air after this. So goodness knows what's going to happen on that one. I think two of them will get through. I can see the gargoyles focusing the one. Oh yeah, you can buy lives. Ten lives a pop. That is expensive. You can buy lives for 200 gold, but once you start going down that road, that's 200 gold that's not going into towers, that's defending you. Which is like one life, and that's effectively 2,000 gold per Hydra. That's too much gold, really. We'll survive this level. At least we'll get to see what the next level's like, but I don't know if we'll get to the end. Oh, I don't think so, random pig move. Not after this. Overclocked. Thanks to your blocking, yes. You slowed down the last bunch of Hydras. We couldn't have done it without you. You again? Yes, me. You caught me. Yes, I did. Now what? Well, you're just gonna stand there and hopefully be useful. I await the Legion's coming. Yeah, well I think we saw a bit of the Legion. I'm sure the last boss is gonna be Archimon. The Night Elves shall suffer. Well, I'm okay with that, because they're really overpowered in one versus one at the moment. Let's go. Oh. So it's basically just a whole bunch of tiny units spread uh, in a very small space. 
there's really no way to know for sure how well you're doing on the air levels. This is going to hurt so much. That's a really nice splash though, whatever was hitting those. Uh, they're so funny those air levels. It's just like clump, just insta gives. Ah, <sighs> what do you mean next time? This is it. This is it. We won. Overclocked won. And that's good enough for me. GG. So uh, we won't get to the end of this map, but you're welcome to try yourself. Uh, you can check it in the video description below. The link will be there. And if you want to give it a go, knock yourself out. Without any further ado, I will say goodbye to you. I remind you to thumbs up the video if you are still watching at this point. And also, if you're still watching at this point, uh, type Warhammer 40k TD with a hashtag in front of it in the comments section. All one word. Because I'm done with this map. One hour, 40 seconds. On top of all the other hours that were spent on the map as well. So, GG. Good enough for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. All the best. Take care.